Adam and Eve live down the street from me. Babylon is every town. It's as crazy as it's ever been. Loves a stranger all around. In a moment, we lost our minds here and lay our spirit down. Today, we lived a thousand years. All we have is now. Run to the water, and you'll find me there. Burnt to the core, but not broken. We'll cut through the madness of these streets below the moon. These streets below the moon. This is the Community Solutions Podcast. Jason Bradley, and director from deep in the bowels of our underground lair, where we're not just surviving, we're thriving. That almost rhymed. It did rhyme, I think. Kind of like uh, Rocky, too. uh, These numbers (laughs) almost add up to nine. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> kind of like that. Yeah. Okay. Kind of kind of uh, like that. What was the song again? I already forgot. Babylon well, is coming. <laughs> I think that was in the lyrics. Adam and Eve. Something like that. That was all in there somewhere. Yeah, that's not the name of the song, but. Uh... Okay. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> wow, short and sweet and to the point today. Well, I yes. uh, why bother thinking if right? You know. Yeah, save save your brain energy for for the meat of the podcast. I like it. Yeah, there ain't much left, so I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it, or as according to some, yeah. not at all. Well, it's been one of those days, huh? Definitely, without a doubt. Oh boy, we're in for a doozy today. All right, that ah. one that one is called Run to the Water from a band called Live. Ah, as opposed to taped? Yes. Live. So who are they? Who are they? How can you, I didn't know if it's live or live. It, it, it's live. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, it, it is spelled the same. I, I get that. But <laughs> I think there was maybe, maybe people that questioned that when they first came out. You know, uh, you had your hardcore... Uh, live fans during mental jewelry, but throwing copper is the one where uh, they kind of made a name for themselves. And uh, throwing copper, yeah, you know that's where uh, lightning crashes, um, selling the drama. Well, uh, absolutely. I mean, all, all the hits. Yes, yes, they had a lot of hits on that album, and then uh, Secret Samadhi didn't do quite as well, but I thought it was every bit as good of an album. That one, and then the distance to here after that. Uh, very, 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 very good album. You know, when it comes to music, let me just say this. Uh, yeah. yeah I, David Cassidy once said, nothing can infinitely keep going up and up and up and up. It's not possible. And for any band, I don't know Live yeah. or Live, but once you set the bar mm-hmm. at a certain level, yeah, I always feel that you've peaked. Yeah. Nothing will live up to that. Nothing can. And you, I don't want to say you slide down, but you just become, it, it's so hard to make everything as good as your best. I don't know. I th- it's kind of like. Uh, yeah. See, I think the Beatles made the best at the end. I, see, I, no, I don't. That's, I know. You, you and don't, I disagree on it. And I think but. the Foo Fighters are still putting out great albums and testing the bounds of things. And I think they're another band like that. Uh, live probably did I peak around like their third and you fourth albums. You tell me albums. Pearl Jam didn't peak at their second album and it was all downhill after that? Not all downhill. They Not all put, downhill. They Vitality put out some okay, really but... good songs. Sirens off of um, not their new album, but the one before that was an amazing uh amazing song but not everything on there was amazing but they they have had some really good songs really good albums and i think you know once you have that breakthrough album it's about maybe yeah maybe having trying for it's that chase after the breakthrough album again but at least continuing to write songs that keep you relevant uh, you know what I mean? You know, you, you, sure. you want people to discover your catalog. You want to, to connect with people. And even, you know, if your new album doesn't do as well as your last one, as long as in this day and age of Spotify and not needing record labels and things like that, you want to keep connecting with people. You want those songs that, that make that connection, uh, you know, in live, their biggest stuff was probably mid '90s. Yeah. Now, where do you get most of your new music from? I mean, who do you listen to? To the, the, new, I mean, new music. Well, I mean, like <laughs> I no. Well, music, oh no. But... There, you, 
and I'm I'm not sure if they're still around. There used to be a couple of radio stations in town that played some like newer alternative rock kind of stuff, mm-hmm. and I would get stuff from there like Trainwreck 1979. Uh, you know, well that's not new 1979. Well, no, but the band was newer. Oh, um, okay. you know, you you got that. You got. Uh, Joy Wave, things like that. N- newer bands that are, that are decent. Um, yeah, I mean, people normally just don't find stuff on radio anymore. And a lot of it, you know, by coming up in playlists on Spotify or Apple Music, you're able to discover new things. So how does a band get their stuff on there, though? I mean, um, how do you get on? Well, I've got a distributor. So, like, for me, you know, I write, I record, you know, I... I self-publish i got you know my own label whatever and then i work through a company called distro kid and, and there's a number of them uh that do this or a handful uh like cd baby things like that but I, i'm with distro kid and what they do is they take my music then and they put it out to spotify and apple music and and deezer and and uh iheart radio and about i don't know 28 different places where where people can find my music uh, around the world. So then once you do that, you got to come up with an advertising campaign, you know, uh, before you put it out, ideally, you know, and then on the back end, you want to, you know, hit advertisements on Facebook and Instagram and, and things like that to be able to reach out to people and then hope that you put out ads that connect with people so that they check it out. And then, you know, from there, it's getting on pod. Uh, not on podcasts, on on playlists and stuff like that, because then people will discover you on the playlists. Mm-hmm. So you got to kind of develop relationships with playlist curators. Curators, let me say that clearly. And uh, and and so I mean, it really is a lot of work, and it's a it's a full time business, really. You know, when you think about all of the marketing that you have to do to be able to get it in front of different people. Huh. So. Well. I suppose again, once again, we see technology breaking down the barriers of yes of what used to be controlled, and and radio is still controlled by big media and a handful of companies and a handful of people, yeah, as seemingly everything else is. But that's the great thing about all this stuff is that that we can uh, go around big media and their monopoly. For now, you know, um, (laughs) until, you know, they start shutting us down, which we've got to, I think, create our own platforms before that happens. So You mean platforms off of being controlled by Apple or Google or something? Yeah, because I think at some point, especially with the Great Reset and whatever, if if our lyrics have... if if my songs get a low e- ESG score and they will, uh, <laughs> they will. Uh, they won't rank high in government and they won't rank high in social. I'm just telling you right now. Well, uh, it's kind of <laughs> like if you look at Twitter. Yes. I mean, if you look at the way that you can't criticize the CDC, um, if the CDC said the Earth was flat, mm-hmm. you're not allowed to debate that. You're not allowed to present evidence contrary to that. You will get taken off. And that's where we're heading with yep. with expression like music, probably too. Yeah, you know, there's definitely a push. I won't take too much more time with this because I know you wanted to talk about something else in our opening. But I don't want to talk about anything. <laughs> well, ahead. there's that. <laughs> but it's nothing I want to talk if, if about. If you if you take and go, you know, you you've got Spotify on your phone now, so you can listen to our podcast, right? I finally uh, yeah, I finally got I it after that, five years. I know that's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if if you go back and and listen to some of the popular playlists of what's popular now, it's just it's garbage. I I, I don't you know. You mean if like the top forty? Yeah, and I don't mean the band garbage from the nineties. They ah. were they were really good with yeah. Butch Vig and I thought they Manson. were gar- I thought they were garbage. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I mean it. Music has gone into this place where it's it's super minimalistic. It's it's a beat. You might put some sort of bass line over it, and a lot of the vocals are monotone, or you know, and it, it it's just not interesting. You know, it's not me being old. It's just not interesting. I mean, music is made up of of rhythm and harmony and melody and dynamics, and, and it doesn't have any of that. It's all the same volume. It doesn't go anywhere. There's nothing to it. I don't understand how people can be emotionally moved by it other than to get up and dance. I don't understand it. And it's not, again, because I'm old, is because they're choosing to not use 
any variations at all. No key changes, no anything. And a lot of these top 10, top 40 type hits, hits, they're, they're basically used on Instagram. Uh, that's a lot of the big ones right now are just that are not Instagram. Sorry. Uh, um, what's that Chinese? Uh, you can tell I don't use that one. Um, yeah, it's zoom. No, it's not oh. zoom. It's uh the social network. Um, uh, all the kids are on uh, Talk Tick or something. TikTok, yeah, okay. yeah. TikTok. Um, it, it's all songs for TikTok, so people can make little short videos with TikTok. I mean, that's that's really what it's come down to, and that's our music industry right now. And so, um, hopefully, as There's I'm still music videos out there anywhere. Uh, yeah, people make music videos all the time. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, I'm and dating myself. No, that's fine. Good people still make them, uh, but I. I'm working on putting together an album. I'm hoping it's going to come out this year. I'm saying that to kind of keep myself accountable to everybody. Look out, out, Thriller. Yeah. Well, no, I, I, I'm i not saying I, I pine for the old days. I want to make it an album that sounds like 1992. I, I want an album that brings back complexity and that that I, I'm not looking to do something old. I'm looking to do something new. But to be able to have layers of things and and to have instrumentation and take things in and out and have people to play with skill come and 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 do something different. I I you know I'm I'm just kind of putting it out there that that's mm. that's the direction I want to go in. I want all right. I'll I want to make I'll... music interesting again. All right, I'll buy one. <laughs> make music great again. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> M-M-I-G, make music interesting. M-I-M-M-I-A, I'm sorry. Uh, make music interesting. Again. M-I-A, that's been good music. That's not totally true. I mean, bands like Pearl Jam and stuff are still putting out records. So huh. so there's your music update, folks, for the day. Uh, Jay. Yes. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about your favorite sheriff. Oh, boy. Our local mall cop. <laughs> Did you watch Ma- uh, no, Paul Blart yet? You have to go watch Paul Blart. I can't watch that. I love it's fun. I Kevin, love Kevin James, James is so funny in that. I think he's great. He's great in this too. Now, now I have yes. to say something because people tell me that that my wife and I remind them, remind them of because she's thin and I'm fat, and we're, we're kind of like <laughs> okay. Uh, I drive a truck for a living, yeah. So it's kind of like. Uh, um, you know, it, 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 we're the we're the uh, uh, what's their last name? The Heffernins, Heffersons. Yeah, yeah. we're the Heffersons. Heffernin, Heffernins. Yeah, Heffernins. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So okay, there's some similarities. I got yeah. a better body than that guy, well, don't I? I mean, come on, <laughs> he's pretty athletic for his size. Though. I can it's, flop around uh, if needed. And uh, I know my hair is thinning. Well, I'm but telling you, I, watch the first one so you get the gist of it. Then go watch the second one. It'll be like being at the sheriff's convention with with uh, Hutch Hutcherson. Okay, Hutchinson. Here's depressing. Yes. You know Hutchinson's younger than me. By the way, I just got I just I just got older this week. Yes, way. happy birthday. Yeah, I mean, by the I, way. it's of course it was negative twenty out on my birthday. Right. As it always again. Is. Happy birthday. Yeah, uh, he only turned twenty seven <laughs> once. You know, yeah, that, that was, was a while ago. 18 years ago. Um, <laughs> but Jay, uh, yes. Hutch Hutchinson, we, we did a whole podcast on his uh, his Andy Griffith moment here. Yes. Of, of, uh, <laughs> who's the drunk who locked himself in the <laughs> jail all the time? Doesn't right. matter. Right. Okay, but uh, some stuff has come out about Hutch Hutchinson, and I was you know wondering about his quickie plea deal and, and so on and so forth. Um, but apparently, subsequently, other things have come on. I'm not surprised. We knew we'd have to update this story. That Hutchinson initially denied he was driving the vehicle. <laughs> oh, well, maybe he took a nap. Maybe nobody was driving it. It's possible. <laughs> maybe um, that's why he ran off the road. Yeah, in the county-owned vehicle, his yeah. county-owned yeah. So vehicle. So maybe he's not lying. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't driving it. And nobody was driving it. It, it could be. Um, yeah. Who who does he say was driving it? Well, initially, hang on, I kind of lost my. Okay, there's a document out there, a search warrant revelation. Yes. Uh, this is from Channel Eleven, so Care Eleven dot com. So 
Hutchinson, who had a strong odor of alcoholic <laughs> beverages emanating, I believe he probably had other odors as well. Uh, <laughs> hey, now. Said that. He might have showered he, that day. This is unbelievable. Yes. Okay. Okay. Denied he was driving and said that he had called the cab and that the cab driver was driving the vehicle. <laughs> what? Now, stop That's when there's a cab driver. He calls a cab. Just think about this for In a Alex. Second. Yeah, just, just something. <laughs> calls a cab driver. The cab driver gets in the Hennepin County Sheriff vehicle right. and is driving <laughs> and crashes while the drunk guy, yeah. he's sober, the drunk guy is sitting there. You know? how did, how so did, where was uh, the cab driver? Did he disintegrate? <laughs> in the- hey, did he call for him the way Rocky called for Polly? He opens up the window. Hey, yo, Polly. Hey, yo, Polly. Love your sister home later. Yeah, I'll call you. Hey, yeah. you. <laughs> I guess somebody called. Hey, cab driver. I'll tell yeah. you, you know, you got to come up with a better story than that. You can tell he didn't pre-plan that story. Uh, That's bad. What if yeah. he came home and told his husband that? <laughs> hey, hey, don't worry there, uh, whatever they call each other. I don't know what it is. Yeah. I was say honey, but I won't say that. Don't worry about it. Uh, the cab driver was driving, but he drove my car and yeah. drove it into a... a Tree or a ditch or whatever it was. Yeah, the cab driver it wasn't me, right? Oh, that makes perfect sense. So, five Hennepin County commissioners have now called on Hutchinson to resign. He remains defiant. Yeah, well, that's what Democrats yeah. do, right? You wait until the storm brews over, and then uh, they absolutely. can't make him quit. So, right. Um, I, I've said this before. Until whoever put Hutchinson there, whoever really controls Minnesota, whoever that is. Whoever, you know, and I'm not trying to be conspiratorial yeah. here, but somebody got Al Franken to resign. Right. Okay. And somebody's there when these people get forced out. And, mm. uh, you know, so the, they have not knocked on Hutchinson's door yet. And they may and yeah. they may not. So I don't know if that, I don't know. Does this race go to a primary county race? I think they would a county uh, race because the commissioners probably. do. Yeah. Probably. I don't think you have. Uh, Tons of sheriffs on the ballot. There's usually two. Yeah. Some counties you have one. Yeah, I, I think there's a handful of people who've thrown their hat in the ring, whoever they are. I mean, yeah. of course, no one cares other than us um, about this. I mean, obviously, this guy wasn't vetted too hard. Uh, no. what, what's small cop's name? Paul Blart. Paul Blart? Yes. That's what we're going to call Hutchinson now, Paul Blart. <laughs> he can go back to doing that. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, maybe maybe he is like Paul Blart, and he's hypoglycemic, and uh, he didn't have enough sugars in his system, and he passed out. Again, you got to see the movie. But, well, yeah. I wonder. What, I wonder what he drinks then if he didn't have enough <laughs> sugars in him. <laughs> it's that zero calories. Yeah, stuff, what, right. It's like Zima or something. Is that <laughs> what he had? <laughs> Some Becks. I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, Jay, maybe, maybe he smelled like beer because he was drinking like N.A. stuff. Uh, you know? maybe, well, maybe, he had to have a lot right? of it. He yeah. had to have quite a few old duels so, to be 0.13. I mean, that's, <laughs> that doesn't come with a few of those. That's so true. That, there is always the blood alcohol test. I guess that's kind of telling, isn't it? It has that tendency to yeah. do. Okay, Jay, one more yes. thing real quick. I know what a Full House fan you were. Oh yes, death of Bob Saget last a couple of days yeah. ago. Uh, Sixty-five looked to be in. I was kind of surprised he was that old. He doesn't look that old. Yeah. Um, uh, passing away. Uh, I know you watched America's Funny Videos or no, something I didn't. too. <laughs> no, I really didn't. Seems like there's a death to report all the time, right? Yeah. There. Until recently, have you ever you watch How I Met Your Mother? No. Okay, because then this isn't. I until recently I didn't know he was the voice of that. I had heard that. I didn't know that oh. until recently. Oh. I didn't know who did the future Ted, if you know the show. <clears throat> so, uh, but I was kind of surprised to find out he was sixty-five years old, which I guess makes sense. I mean, yeah, <laughs> Candace Cameron and I are the same age. So <laughs> <laughs> I guess it does make sense, but it just doesn't seem like that show was thirty years ago. But right. <clears throat> Um, I guess every birthday, I think I struggle with how many years have passed. I honestly think I, I think that's the only time I struggle with that. 
Yeah. So, anyway. Bob Saget, one of the dirtiest comedians on earth. Outside of maybe Gilbert, Gilbert Gottfried. He's uh, up there. I've seen <laughs> Gilbert know. Gottfried. Great guy. Really? Super nice guy. He seems guy. like a nice guy. Super I, duper nice yeah. guy. Yeah. Uh, I, if it wasn't you know, for his annoying really voice, yeah. uh, you wouldn't... I, I love you his would, voice. His, his voice cracks me up. Well, so. his voice is what separates him from other people. Yeah. You, know, you have to be different. Right. You have to have something that, you know, uh, sets you apart. Hey! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like you have to have a stick, you know? And, right. And so, yeah, his... His crazy voice does separate. He's like five foot three too. He's really huh. short, but I did meet him, and he was he was a super wonderful person. So, huh. that's good to hear. Sometimes people aren't. So funny, uh, you know. I have not met that. I don't know what I don't know what the over under is on meeting quote unquote celebrities. Yeah, but I I'm struggling to think of a bad experience I've had meeting somebody. Huh. I'm honestly struggling, whether it's a pro athlete, yeah. uh, a politician, uh, even ones that I don't like, or don't like mm. me. I, I've, I can't recall a time where somebody was just an a-hole. Mm. I, in, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just, you know. In person, you're just that disarming. That's... I guess. Yeah. I mean, maybe I'm just that likable. Yeah. That just, you know. Just, just, well, I'm still here in season six, yeah, so. No yeah. Worries. What the hell? <laughs> I thought you'd have run away a long time ago. I don't know. I just can't think of anybody who was a jerk. Huh. So. Yeah. Because, I mean, I, here, here's the thing. You meet somebody one time, and it could be the one time that they're. Having a bad day. Right. Yeah. Or just don't want to be bothered or whatever. Right. I understand it. And I just have never had that experience. So mm. I've never got them on that day. That's good. Mm. Whatever. I don't want to tell you. Um, okay. Jay. Yes. Statement. Statement. Yes. You know what I hate? Where do we start with this? This well, could take a while. I don't like oatmeal. <laughs> don't say you like it. I love oatmeal. God, yes. Jeez. Malto meal, cream of wheat, it's all good. Uh, so if you had the choice between oatmeal and some good, you know, uh, t- t- fruity pebbles, you'd pick oatmeal? Uh, fruity pebbles is like my favorite. Yeah, that's yeah, like choosing that's... a redhead over a, a brunette. I mean, come on. You, 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 how could you pick oatmeal? I didn't say I'd pick oatmeal. I'd say p- fruity pebbles is like my favorite Okay, cereal. fine. So there's cocoa yeah. puffs and there's oatmeal. Yeah, Which one do you take? I'm not as big a fan of the chocolate stuff. Or maybe oatmeal. <laughs> In that instance, oh, you put some fruit in it. You, that's, that's good stuff. I can't even look at it. Mushrooms. Okay, there's just this yeah, stuff. Like you don't put mushrooms in oatmeal. No, but I don't like mushrooms. Oh. I'm saying I don't like oh, mushrooms. Okay, you're adding to your list. Yes, I'm okay. adding. You like mushrooms? Yes. Of course you Of course do. I do. God. Cooked. I, what I, else do you I, like? I don't Idi like Amin. Salads. Joseph like Stalin. No, what else do you I don't like? like? I don't like Idi Amin or <laughs> Joseph Stalin. <laughs> what? what? Uh, Paul Pot. Let's just uh, let's just keep the list going. Uh, I'm just trying to. You oh know. my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> what? Like oatmeal and mushrooms. I give up. Okay. I, the, I have things I I don't like beets. Won't eat oh, them. Won't God. touch them. Oh, can't look at them. They're terrible. Doesn't matter how they're prepared. Doesn't they're just matter if terrible. you got the beets. <laughs> terrible. Right. We got the beets. Hum, not a big hummus fan. Kind of tastes like. They got dirt in the stuff when they yeah, were. Well, if I knew it, what hummus was, I would agree with. Yeah, you. it's add it yeah. to my list, even though I don't know what it is. Add it to my list. I'll do that. All right, put it on crackers and stuff. It's yeah, <laughs> special K, whatever. All right, here, here's the thing. <laughs> special K. <laughs> here's the thing. What I hate almost as much. Yes. As oatmeal. Choose <laughs> between oatmeal and the Central Mississippi River Regional Planning Partnership. It would be a tough choice. Yes. And I'll tell you what. When I was, where I was going with that is I do not like it when government gets together with other governments and creates more government. Right. You know, I mean, and, 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 and I'm not some anti-government Rambo guy living on Montana or something threatening to shoot anybody. Right. Government I has mean, legitimate functions. We are in the business of training candidates to run for office. We're we're not anti-government. No, but a bit, but but. 
you literally cannot escape this. And I, I mean, mm-hmm. I don't care where you live. You can live in Antarctica, Timbuktu, yeah. the Dead Sea. I live um, in the Dead Sea. You well, can I, live in the you, Dead you Sea. You might be right about that. There, there might be irrigation. There's probably government. an irrigation floodplain plan around the Dead Sea. You could, uh, you could live in. Uh, well, and, and and this is the thing. Hitler's yeah. bunker and there's I, regional <laughs> government. <laughs> well, they there's... had regional government long before yeah. uh, he oh, built a bunker. Uh, that was part of the uh, 2030 plan over right. there. And, and it you, you mean the 1930 plan? Oh. They they had that going before uh, they even entered the war, um, or started the war, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we see this everywhere. Um, and most people in the state of Minnesota think about the Metropolitan Council when they think about regional government. And that's what gets all the publicity. That's what gets the brunt of the slings and arrows from people is, you know, the, the, the Metro Council. And rightly so, because they're huge. They take a ton of tax money. They spend a ton of tax money. And they have they have power that they wield over the cities that is and the counties, which I think is just a crime. Uh, and that's where a lot of the genesis for this is. You know, uh, every 10 years or whatever, they update, you know, they come up with a new plan for the next 10 years, whether it's uh, Thrive MSP 20 ahead of the year, or now they're working on a 2050 pl- plan. Then they have to stay ahead of the cities so that when the cities redo their comprehensive plans, which they're forced to do by the Met Council Mm -hmm. and submit them and be approved by the Met Council, otherwise the Met Council can take them to court if they won't play ball. Yeah, Um, ask like Elmo. You don't believe that. Then, uh, you know, they they really have power over housing, transportation, uh, roads, parks, uh, wastewater, all of these things. Uh, But... This is something that was happening all over the ca- uh, country. This is not something that was isolated to the metro area. I got to say something, though, about the Met Council. You know District 6? No. Which district uh, is that? Oh, that's Crystal, New Hope, Golden Valley. Oh, Park. the one I'm in. See? <laughs> is now has an opening. Really? There's a vacant not for a seat on the Met Council, and yeah. I, I don't know. I'm sure they filled it with an ally. Oh, I'm sure. That's all they do. Yeah, so... Yes. I um, wonder what District I'm in. Yeah, I don't know. In Plymouth? Hard I to say. Absolutely no idea. So the Met Council kind of set the tone for the rest of the state. Then you had the uh, Minnesota Association of Development Organizations, MADO, which uh, you can find at mnado.org. Uh, and they then are a group of people that are elected to office, people that are appointed to administrative seats, uh, planners and city District managers one, and I'm all sorry. the county yeah. people and all this. And and they then broke most of Minnesota up into 10 regions. And the, the Arrowhead region, and you've got uh, District 5, and you've got uh, all, over, all over the state, you've got these. Uh, the only strip that wasn't was really following the Mississippi River Pretty much, you know, down from St. Cloud through the Twin Cities, which has the the Metropolitan Council, and then down uh, it, it goes through the, uh, the southwest, southeastern corner of the state. Uh, but we're finding that some of these places, uh, w- we find regional government popping up, uh, smaller ones, to fill some of the void that's there. Uh, you know, in St. Cloud, there, there's some regional groups that, that have control over that area. Uh, that aren't associated with Mado because they're smaller groups. Um, but this group is, is specific. To it. Well, tell us a little bit about the history of it and how it got started. Well, it started as the I-25 Coalition. Yeah, 25 is uh, in 2016. Um, that runs north through Monticello into Big Lake, then runs with Highway 10 up to Becker. Yeah. And then goes north toward Foley and Pierce and all that after that. Okay. And it was created in 2016. Yes. I'm going to add to the list of words I don't like. Yes. There's the S word. Sustainability. 
or sustainable or any. Yes. If it starts with sustain, I don't like it. Yeah. Okay. Getting near that is the C word. Yes. Collaboration. Oh. That, that co- comes from corporate America. That, that is, is a oh. total corporate term. Yes. We're collaborating with other people. Yeah. Benefit the region. The coalition developed a commitment among policymakers, whoever they are, yes. exactly. Created an understanding of transportation issues affecting the region. Is is there a is there a traffic jams up there in, in that area? I, I'm I'm not. I don't aware think of so. Any. Okay. I don't think so. Maybe if you have like a, a herd of moose crossing the street or <laughs> the somebody's highway. horses get loose. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> By early 2019, extensive yeah. discussion of a river crossing. Revealed that transportation factors alone cannot drive a bridge location. Hmm. Which is strange. Transportation factors cannot drive a bridge location. Then what would drive it? Because you should put a bridge where people need to get across a river. Well. Right? Right. And uh, let, me, let me say something here. This is maybe the most critical statement. This is on their history page. And by the way, you can find this at regionalplanningpartnership.org. Okay. With guidance from the Federal Highway Administration and the Department of Trans- Minnesota Department of Transportation, MnDOT, the group committed to creating a shared regional vision and goals and to determine what's necessary to accomplish them. So they have not only collaborated in this but they have consulted the feds and the state along with it yes so this is a bigger deal than they are letting on here um they hired consultants and facilitators with multi-jurisdictional process experience boy say that a bunch of times um and I don't know where they're where are they planning to put a bridge? Uh, I don't know. It doesn't say there. No, it doesn't. So I'm. Hmm. Which tells me that this really is not about doing something like that. I mean, uh, they have <sighs> a brochure. Ooh. Just uh, only shiny things here with... Of course, a sales piece, as as we like to call them, right? Basically, it looks harmless enough. Yeah, something to get the public on your side, after uh, all. I think this is where I the alarm bells really go off for me, because, yeah. again, you want to build a bridge, okay? You don't need to talk about the things... You don't need to make a 2030 framework in order to do that. Right. You know, and that's what they have. They have an entire uh, regional framework that has been put together called the 2030 framework. Framework 20, th- I'm sorry, framework 2030, excuse me, uh, is the region's first collaborative, there, there that word is again. Yes. Collaborative planning and economic development plan. Hmm. The partner communities anticipate significant growth. They always do. There, there's that yeah, again. Again. I, I, I have yet to meet a regional plan that does not project substantial growth to an area. Yeah, they have to have substantial growth to justify the policies that they want. Right. And through regional planning, we'll maintain a high quality of life for area residents, businesses, and visitors. Visitors? Okay. In summer of 2021, the partner adopt, partnership adopted an aspirational regional vision, strategies, and robust actions to advance forward those strategies. The 2030 framework, and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. It's all here below. Yeah. Now, the regional vision, they have values. Uh huh. I'm sure. Value, and it's not written very large, so pardon this. Build a complete region. 
versus what they have well, now, which is an incomplete read. I guess it is. Establish wow. our position as a region. I, I don't think it's moving anywhere, right? Yeah, well, I think it's, it's pretty established. It, more, more corporate. I, I don't think it's going to move anywhere. Here's it's some a, corporate. Oh, this is, man, I'll tell you what. I used to work at Best Buy. Yes. <sighs> you have to give the women the fans and everything for this. <laughs> Manage through transition. Wow. <laughs> Which means absolutely nothing. That's, that's, that's like saying career path to a <laughs> soccer mom. <laughs> Manage through transition. <laughs> Can we transition them out? Yeah. Embrace. Right. Yes. Interdependency. <laughs> that means that means nobody stands on their own. That see, this is a thing that actually means something. That yeah, all not, of, not what, what they think it means. All, oh but, yes, no. They, they what won't they think say it means, what they, they won't say. Right. That all of these townships and counties and cities have to rely on each other and they none of them can stand alone and do their own thing. You have to embrace this. Interesting. Ridiculous. And here's that word again. Seek deeper collaboration. Uh. So that's the core values. Now I want to know, yes. I want to know the consultant who came up with that and what that cost. A lot. That cost a lot. That cost a lot. I mean, I could have probably wrote that from my days back in corporate America. Dig deep into everything I hate and try to write that into a document. <laughs> <sighs> everything that made me roll my eyes in, in meetings. Yes, I could, I could remember that. I remember them too. Yes. It's horrible. You know, here's the worst part about corporate America. Yes. The best way... To advance in corporate America mm -hmm. is to give no opinion whatsoever. Absolutely. <laughs> if you are a potted plant at a meeting, <laughs> you will get promoted so fast your your shorts will have to take a, another trip to the office. That's what'll happen. <laughs> and, and you wanna you wanna accelerate that? Make sure you nod your head in agreement. <laughs> Every time they say something, just sit and nod your head. And always make sure you are seen putting something in recycling. That's another way. Oh, to move on. is it? Yes. yes. Oh. Your water bottle yeah. goes into recycling. And make sure people notice it. Yes. Oh, yes. You got to make sure people notice everything you do. It's a yeah, the whole, <laughs> whole thing behind the, the stupid self-assessments they make you do and the yeah, goal the more, setting. And the, the more the, harmless you look, the further yes. you'll go. Right. Corporations, they don't want people that tell the truth they don't want people that have new ideas uh, they want people who look like they're going to but never actually do it All right. <laughs> yeah, that's, right. <laughs> that's what they want just yes. some advice to you you people out there that are that are working for places at like least that. we're not cynical i mean we got that going for us exactly i mean being cynical who live up in this area you're gonna get pissed off here when you you're going to see the same BS that you hear everywhere. I'm just warning you, okay? Change the station. Fast no, forward don't. this part if you don't nope. want to hear it. No, I mean, I don't. They, they need to hear it. Yeah, don't, but, but do, okay? In addition, this is under land use strategy. Now, remember, this is supposed to be a collaboration, yes. you know, a regional partnership, yet they've got land use strategy. Of course they do. I mean... In addition, this is hold on. I just I won't make any any uh, comment till this is over, or till this I read this. In addition to serving as a major gateway to recreation opportunities, quote up north, quote, the region and the partner communities enjoy a wealth of their own natural assets. That includes the Mississippi River, multiple lakes, uh, so on and so on and so forth, parks and trails. So, what do they want to do with that? What do you think? That they would like to do with their with their lakes and with the river, Jay. Take a wild guess under land use, oh, which again they I need. don't understand why that's a regional thing. Right. I, I, I don't get. Um, they need more interconnected walking and biking paths. That's number one. 
Action L1A promote the expansion of bicycling huh. and walking infrastructure. So it's like visitors, we've seen this before. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where. I mean, this is what I saw. See it in Minneapolis, St. Louis Park, Bloomington, Alaska, Florida, uh, Ecuador. Yeah. I see it everywhere. <laughs> Same thing. It's popping yeah. up. As a disclaimer, we have not technically studied Ecuador, but uh, the rest of it's. I don't true. have to. Right. I know what's there. It's I don't, there. Yeah, it's I don't there. have to. Re- so. Promote the expansion of biking and walking infrastructure throughout the region. So sorry, you were going to say visitors. Well, visitors, I mean, look. um, How do I put this? The other thing visitors are going to do to an area like this is go fishing. Mm -hmm. You don't do that on your bike. Yeah. Okay. Or they're going to go snowmobiling or something like that. Camping, uh, if there's camping, uh, some sort if of campground. There, yeah. But you are not. Nobody from nobody from Plymouth or Crystal is going to throw their bike in the back of their Honda Civic and drive up there and bike in their paths. Okay? This is all poppycock. Uh, this is all nice-sounding regional group that you can possibly think of. They all say this. They all promote this. Oh, but if they interconnect their trails... With the trails in the cities. Oh, well, cooking now. That's goal number three. It is. Commission a regional. I'm not even trying. Commission this. a regional trails <laughs> and greenways map and plan. One of the top goals of 2022. Yeah. Oh, boy. Cons- to make a map and a plan. That's good. That's a good Absolutely. goal. Absolutely. So Hold it's on. once again, it is to. Uh, connect them all. You can't just have you can't just have a, a path in, in Becker. You have to be able to bike all the way to to Buffalo or to to Worthington or to <laughs> Cheyenne. You've got to be able to bike. You've got Cheyenne. to interconnect to yeah. all of this. <laughs> Otherwise, it's useless. Right. If you can't bike to Devil's Tower and back, oh, I don't know what the problem is. I mean, if you can't bike to Chile or Argentina. How are you? How's anybody ever going to do it? How is ever anybody ever going to bike to Paris if they don't? Now, what out, is yes. what is a greenway? What, well, how does that differ from like regional trail? Um, a greenway is how do I explain this? It, it's it's more of a like a regional trail is you know it it because uh, uh, like it's a, all it's all the same, but like it's a really path, a different designation. It's just like a path, and the, a greenway is like a larger thing. Uh, no greenway is generally are what they use to interconnect multiple paths so you have you so you, you can't have, just connect multiple paths you have to have a special thing that <laughs> right it, it it's what's used to no connect i know different I know. paths it's yes. like how 10 and 25 run together right two paths have to run together to create a little greenway and then 25 <laughs> goes north and 10 goes northwest right right but by having it a <laughs> greenway you know you're not uh you're not developing roads there and all that it's just you know you you have a place for the bikes to go although that's not necessary well I'm trying to think how all they I, do it in the cities but yes it, it's about adjoining different biking paths together all i know is the only green way i like used to play for the bike right okay Me too. land use strategy yes strategery yes jay you're not gonna like this either i don't like folks, any of this folks, i'm sorry and tell me where you've heard this before Promote life cycle housing. Ugh. Now, what the hell is life? I still don't Crime understand what that means. You got to that... have housing available for people of all ages and times in their life. So you got to have houses for uh, the elderly, like assisted living. You got to have entry level homes for families that are just getting going. You got to have affordable housing for people that can't afford housing. You got to have dog housing for dogs. <laughs> you got to have baby housing for infants that just come out of the womb. Okay, the last two are a little You got to have uh, but, the, the housing for empty nesters that don't want to yep. mow their lawn anymore. Right, right. Townhomes. You got to have all of that. You need apartments. You need townhomes you need uh single tents. family homes you, you need, need bigger single family homes yeah you need tent cities for the homeless you need <laughs> you need uh, assisted that living dump you of need... california Ugh. um so they have their action plan here of course they do so how much of this uh... well the big one uh, to me is this develop a regional housing strategy this is yeah where i think it really gets dangerous because Every city's not the same. No. And every 
city is going to be the same. Right. And the idea that that you're going to take Becker and Big Lake and try to make them the same is an impossibility. Right. But the based on the data, trends, and input from local partners, which include everybody in their little group, a re- regional strategy provides high-level guidance for accommodating housing growth while respecting the character and priorities of the region. Okay. Those two things don't go together. I mean, they really no. don't. You can't develop a regional housing strategy and at the same time keep the character and small town feel. No regional government can do that. All right. I mean, that's just not possible. It's hard enough for a city council to do mm-hmm. But if I got a regional government over here, they're not going to care right. about the small town feel of Monticello, okay? Mm-hmm. Especially the ones no. who do live there. They they're not. I care. mean, this is really about urbanizing our small towns. Yeah. You know, they're not. Even, they're, they're small towns. They're not suburbs. They're not even really cities. Mm-hmm. They are. If you, if you want this crap, move to Maple Grove. Okay, that's my answer to this. Yeah, if, if that's what you want. But we all know what a housing strategy is going to be. This is this is uh, it's the same everywhere. Yeah, it's it's what you said. It's going to be townhomes, mm-hmm. fake neighborhoods. Yep. Uh, the 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 uh, and, and well, this is another thing. They do not provide starter homes. A no. starter home nowadays is they've a, all been built already. Yeah, the, the, you you will not see ramblers being built no. or anything like that. It will be the the medium density to mm-hmm. high density Winnick green type things that will be it'll, that's the starting it'll home be now. that and and you know you'll get the larger single family homes in those fake communities yeah. you know where it you you have one developer building the whole thing and it's all just this intertwined cookie cutter house cookie cutter houses why because it brings in more tax money you can't get enough tax money from ramblers you can't get enough tax money from one and a half stories. Yeah, you, you if, can't. If the house is worth one hundred and sixty grand versus three hundred, right? You, the city is going to pick the three hundred and then call that an affordable housing. Yep, I had no doubt about it. What is placemaking? Placemaking is where is that, is that where uh, 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 you hike the the holder. Uh, Hikes the football and put, he place makes no. the football down for the kicker. No, that's, that's not uh, place, place kicking. Uh, but isn't the place but, maker? Uh, uh, <laughs> does he make the place for the kick? I, I don't know. That that's I think he's just the holder. Um, <laughs> place making I'm is trying. I know you got to laugh or you cry. It's one or the other. Uh, place making is one of these new terms that they've been throwing around for oh you know a handful of years, and it's. Where you center communities' uh, development around certain things, you know, whether that is, um, in some instances, a light rail station. In some instances, it might be a downtown with mixed-use development. Um, in, in some circles, they talk about, like, a, a, I don't think they use the term ethnic placemaking, but that's what it is where you, you art, build it. That's a part based, of it. Yeah, yeah. Art based You're on right, different though. ethnicities ethnicities, and uh, and that's part of placemaking as well. So it's uh, it's about trying to draw the community into one place, which it, it's not bad. You need in a city to have places that you draw your community to to be together, whether that's ball fields or that's a beach or whether that's a, a community pool or whatever. What, what Whatever type of amenities you think that you need to have in a city or the people want not the government whatever type of amenities the people of the city are willing to pay for so that they enjoy you know their city that's one thing but when you try again to say okay we're going to plan this out like this because we don't want people driving very far to go shopping we don't want people you know uh, driving very far to get from one place to another. So we're going to cloister them in these smaller housing developments with shops not very far away. We're going to have, you know, our, our downtown center be like a focus or whatever it is that you do. Um, that is placemaking. Hmm. 
So super, super common way uh, nowadays of, of planning how to develop a city. So we plan a placemaking. Yes. Okay, that's pretty much what it says here. I've mean, pretty much read it. Yes. Land use strategy four. Improve regional communication to support local land planning and management. What? Huh? Doesn't that just go against plans one through three? Read it one more time. Improve regional communication to support local land planning and management. How can you have support. a regional land planning and then support local land planning and management? It's a communication plan they want. Okay. Yeah. Those communities, actually, they're not very diverse, but whatever. Yeah. And can be attributed to the scale of character of development or the lack of it in each place. The multi-year trend, the small town feel is shared, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's it's gobbledygook is what it is. Develop mm -hmm. a regional conceptual development strategy. Which is under one of their so, that's one of their action items. So let's just stop on that for a moment. Uh, development conceptual strategy. This is where they hire consultants. This is where they do environmental studies. This is where they come up with a plan. The 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 city planners, the county planners, uh, all of those developments, community development directors, all these people come together. And they make their plan, and then they have open houses to sell it to the public. They don't ask the public if they want it. They say, hey, here's what we want to do. Here's our strategy. Here's the maps. Here's little uh, little versions I made out of macaroni and, 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 and tempera paint. And this is what we're going to sell to you. This, you know, what's your feedback, right? But it's managed so that they don't get the real feedback, you know, well, well, again, the it's the we got the we've got the um, plans. Here's how we sell it. The consultants are really there to sell it. They're there to sell the plans. They're not there to make them. There's no consultant that makes anything. Yeah. Okay? They they they're they're there they're there as the marketing, the sales pitch, so on and so forth. Uh, that's really what they're there to do. I mean, right. Um, economic stuff. Oh, yeah, good, good stuff here too, huh? Not really. Oh, economic strategy. Ah, <sighs> of course they talk about continued growth. Yeah, which of course everybody has. All right. Um. A collaborate. <laughs> <God. laughs> well, let, let me let me skip down to something because it's interesting how they have on here increase the pool of skilled labor in the region. Now, tell me how in the world a regional government could do that. Well, I mean, let me tell you something. There are ways to attract this, right. but the way they're going to go about it, of course, is completely back it's going to be tiff districts it's going to be um uh abatements it's going to be you know things like that tax breaks that other businesses don't get um that's, there's that's how they do it there's an element of that i think that the the best way to to get this is to reduce the size of government to get the red tape out and so on and so forth but here, here, here's what they say. Initiate discussions with higher education institutions to better integrate economic development with workforce development. Hmm. Now, stop right there. You're not going to fix the problems that you have in education. Yeah. Okay? I mean, the idea... Education in this state, in this country, so screwed up. Um, there is a role, though, for local communities here. I mean, yeah. to, 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 you know, highlight, because uh, I, I, like you say, Jay, and you put it very well, high school teaches to go to college. Yep. 
Okay, it doesn't teach you to be a business person or an entrepreneur yep. or go to a vocational school or whatever. Um, and that is where the workforce is has been lacking for a long, long time. Yeah, and you're not gonna you're not gonna develop that by talking. You're gonna have to re redo that. I mean, that's gonna have to change completely. Um, facilitate partnerships between businesses and schools. Let me tell you something. That's the last thing I want to see is big business with big education. Right. What are they going to do? What are they going to do? They're gonna, that's how you got ESG scores. Mm-hmm. In case those they got together did that. I mean, that's yeah. that's just nonsense. And I mean, all of this stuff, it, I, I hate saying this, but this is all such gobbledygook. You know, I, <laughs> I'm going to skip to something. Okay. Just because I, I don't even want to read it. You can read it if you want to, but I mean... This interconnections, they have an entire thing on interconnections. Mm. Continually address regional vulnerabilities. Okay. Services like food banks and ride sharing may better serve our communities if they operate at a regional level. Hint, hint. What does that mean? Future transit. Consolidation and, yep, transit. Remember... They don't want ride share. They don't want Uber. Yep. They want that replaced with government. With government yep. transit. This right Big there. Government. This sets the stage. Yep. The timeline is 2024 and beyond because they know this this can't be a short term goal. Mm-hmm. But this is a they're laying the groundwork for future transit. Yes. Wonderful. So what are we going to do now? The light rail between Monticello and Becker. I doubt that, but uh, hey, don't you know, put it past well, anybody. <laughs> I could see, you know, this is the thing. We, you have some cities that are abandoning the light, the uh, North Star, and asking for an end to that. But what do we know? They would love to run that to St. Cloud. Yes, in fact, that's been endorsed by mm-hmm. some of the counties, some of the city councils. Even though it's a miserable failure, it's never full. It's a money pit. They're not meant. To succeed. No. You're going to places that are not dense. And, and, and their response is to make to them itself? dense. Their yeah. response will be to well, make Well, the growth them is... Dense. If you look at the growth of that region, and you and I have done some looking yeah. into the growth of that region over the last Build 20 years, of the growth over the last 20 years has been slow. It has, it has not grown at a quick pace. Yeah. It's not starting to grow at a quick pace. It's not going to grow at a quick pace. But yet they keep pretending like it is. Well, and I'll tell you here, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to another part here. Pursue a regional lobbying effort. Yeah. This is where the free money comes in. State and federal funding for transportation, infrastructure, housing, and other major investments, i.e. spending, is increasingly tied to regional collaboration and data-driven analysis. By the way, they're not wrong on that. I mean, I have to say that that there's strength in numbers when it comes to lobbying for free money. So when they say this, they're not exactly wrong. I don't like it, but they're not wrong when they say it. Sitting at the center of discussions occurring around the region, the partnership can elevate the region's needs and highlight its potential to ensure that priority projects are considered and or funded. Let me translate that. We want grant money. We want bonding. We want to get into the bonding bill. We want we want something and we want the people living here not to pay for it. Right. <laughs> how, how does that? That's so uh, the state of Minnesota paying for New Hope's pool. You know, but but they're right in a sense is that their strength in numbers. Yeah. I mean that that unfortunately that is true. They say it again. Continue conversations with MnDOT and counties regarding special projects. Most transportation and infrastructure investments have resulted from cross-jurisdictional collaboration. How many times have I said that word? Too many. 
One is too many. Yes. As the region grapples with growth and associated congestion, they must be talking about the cough they have, it will be essential for the partners to speak with more collective and unified voices as major investments are considered and prioritized. Wait, collective and unified voices? What yes. about what about voices that aren't unified that don't agree with what you're doing? Oh, they're not people who don't like they're what not you're at doing. The table. Come on, Jay, you know that. What about disunified voices? What, what, what don't, like, don't they have a right to to petition their government? Isn't I, that enshrined in the constitution? I like what I am. I'm the unsilent majority. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, again for Rocky, right? I'm the unsilent majority, Big Mouth. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Rocky Four, right? Yeah, that was yes. uh, Pauly who yep. said that. Yep. Um, <laughs> pr- they have a progress update. Yeah. Transportation S- Task Force was established on 92821. I guess that's another group within this group. Working to move forward and aligning comprehensive and land use plans and strategies in accordance with the direction provided by MnDOT. So now MnDOT's telling them how uh-huh. to do it now. Yeah, so St. Paul's got their fingers in there. That's good. So before you move on from that point, can you explain a little bit what the implications of that are? I mean, are we looking just at state highways or are we looking at a broader development of of arterial highways? And Well, it could be that. I mean... I'm sure those plans are in somebody's drawer somewhere. In, in, right. But, well, I, I think what you're looking, look, with any money like this is going to come strings. Yes. Whether that's complete streets, whether that's sidewalks, whether that's, uh, you know, certain type of housing has to be X, roundabouts. I mean, mm-hmm. you my guess is, yes, yachts thing uh, to be doing. I mean, don't uh, they have enough things to plow? Or, yeah. I, mean, I mean, I I don't know. But every time you consult up the chain, that, that doesn't right. come with nothing. Mm-hmm. And if they're going to go in a collaborative process and... That and, is so NPR of you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> lobby for, you know, other people's money, it's going to come with... You know, I mean, look, reading this, I, I could be reading this out of Minneapolis. Okay, yeah. so it's going to come with all of that crap. They even have they have timelines with this. What are some of those timelines? Well, what I'm talking about right now, which is the the MnDOT uh, collaborating with MnDOT and other counties regarding special projects, they have that as this year a goal to. They establish this task force, and that tells me that they are looking this year to probably get in the bonding bill or get grant money or something like that. Uh, they don't come out and say it, but they do. You're right. You know, they know what language to use and what language not to use. Hmm. Um. Another thing on here that's very interesting is trends. They have this whole thing on trends in the region. Uh, And I I, I think that, first I want to say something here, that trends are probably the one thing that is the most unreliable thing to look at. Yeah. Because I can tell you that how many times have you gone in here and looked back and these planners have been right? Mm-hmm. It's not very often. And anything can change to disrupt a trend. Um, growth, when you look at growth 30 years from now, look at the United States 30 years ago and look yeah. at it today. And you will see vastly different country, vastly different states, vastly different. It depends on the location. Right. Different racial makeups, different, you know, X amount of people retiring, snowbirds. uh, Yeah. I mean, um, go back to the 80s when 
New York had 38 electoral votes and Florida had 20 yeah. or whatever, something like that. You know, Texas had like 25. What's changed in the last 30 years? So when you sit here and you plan out so far ahead, you're making so many assumptions Yeah. that I just, I personally don't think this, any of this data is reliable. No. I mean, just, it, it's all based on assumptions, and I'd like to know how they get to some of these projections because, A, they're never right, yeah. B, they're not even close to right, and C, when you look at the previous growth percentages in these areas, there is no way to project what the, the future numbers that they're coming up with unless they believe that they're going to be able to get um, people moving to this country to move to that area specifically. Well, now there's some of that may be factored in. But if you look much of their of their and I don't want to read all this to you people. I mean, you can look at it here. Much of it is based on the past. Mm -hmm. Much of it is based on the past 20 years. You know, uh Population has aged as baby boomers. Are, well, 30 years, baby boomers will be dead. Yeah. Okay, so who are all the retired people who are going to replace them? Because there's not as big a Generation X as there was of the baby boomers. No. and Not even close. And you also have to factor where are people starting to retire. Yeah. 50 years ago, people were not moving down to Florida. Right. They were not moving to Arizona. Now they are. Right. And there's reasons for that. It's not just weather. Mm -hmm. It's taxes. It's easier to communicate than it's yep. ever been. It's cheaper to fly than it's ever been. Yep. I mean, there's a million reasons why that's happening. So when you look at what's happened in the past 20 or 30 years, uh -huh. you cannot necessarily cut that out like a cookie sheet and put that on the next 30. Well, we grew 40% population over the past 20 years. Well, that didn't mean anything. Right. You know, I mean... Now, a governor could come in and double the taxes and chase everybody. You don't know. <laughs> right. I mean, it's, it's just so... I mean, look, I went through this when I was on the planning commission in Crystal. Of course, the Met Council projected growth, said we had to add high-density housing. But guess what? Crystal has fewer people today than it did in 1960. It's a total lie. It's a total... So look, I... I yeah. I'm not saying this region won't grow. I'm not saying that. It'll grow. I'm saying if it does, you're going to have to stop at every interval and yeah. re put everything into the computer again. Right. You know, I mean, I'm sorry, is Becker a retirement destination? Why are seniors going to project it? And tell me right. tell me what that is based on. What are there? A thousand people in Becker? I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's not very big. Right. So, you know, the idea they need life cycle housing, uh, mean, you just shake your head at it. I don't know. Yeah. You know, so it's just, but I mean, they have this whole thing on <clears throat> um, planned growth is, is to uh, about 50% for new housing. That's what their, wow. what their residential land is. Today and then the planned growth. And if, if I'm understanding this right, that's by the year 2030. That's not very far away. No, I mean, everybody I mean, thinks years. 2030 is far in the future. It's, yeah, eight years. Yeah, I mean. It'll be here before you know it. So, you know, this this stuff is, uh, you know, to grow those things. You're not right. going to grow without, if people can't work, they can't live where they can't work. So there's... But anyway, there's just page after page, and you know everything's going to grow. Everything's going to um, uh, need to be crammed in here to keep the quality of life going on right. in this area. So, uh, stuff you can find. I, I sh we should mention the partners in here. We I don't think we did that. No. Uh, cities include Monticello, Big Lake, Becker. They also include Big Lake Township, Becker Township, Monticello Township, Silver Creek Township, and Sherburn and Wright County. Hmm. Now, where's Wright? Is Monticello in Wright County? Yes. Is, okay. Yes, it is. Why. And so is Silver Creek Township. Okay. Yes. So the uh, part they got a partnership wheel here. 
Yeah. It's pretty, pretty Ooh, colors. Partnership and wheel. Like that. They've so, got so an executive nice. committee. They've okay. got a process consultant. They have all the planners are a part of this as well. Of every city. Well, from Wright County, yep. Sherburn County, County Monticello, right. Big Lake, and Becker, the townships. Yep. Are they're right. You don't need that. You don't have planners in that sense. <laughs> you know, because there are well, restrictions right. on, on density and, and what they can build in the township to begin with. No question. They've got a joint powers agreement. Mm-hmm. Um, I should mention that. I am sure there's a way to dissolve this thing, but I'm sure it's not easy. Yeah. Uh, but so the joint powers agreement where it has a purpose, it has an organization, that's where the new name came in. Uh, the powers and duties, which is the devils in the de- details on that. They do have an annual budget. Don't know what it is. Can't find it on here. Um, there is a process to withdrawal. A uh, six-month written notice is what is required. Uh, there is a way to terminate this Yeah. Um, also, as well as a hold harmless section, which is weird. Hold um, harmless for what? Like if we if we destroy your town playing Sim City here with your lives, we're not not to be held responsible for that or what? Uh I don't know. Okay. It's too much to read. It's too too <laughs> Oh boy. Too 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 small a print. Yeah. Do you need do you need some readers? Probably, okay. but I'm just because I just turned 45 doesn't mean I need those. I actually do use them occasionally, but not in public. Yeah. Uh, so they have specific powers and duties, co- coordinate long-range planning, develop and recommend to individual partners. Here's another key thing. Oh. Develop and recommend to individual partners policies, ordinances, regulations, and other actions that will promote orderly development. Now, wait, let me, wait, oh, yeah, you go ahead. Let me let me tell you what that means. Yes. You're going to go to City A and say, here's what we think you ought to do, and here's how we recommend you do it. And let me tell you something. This is for the region's benefit. You don't do it. We'll be coming after you. Yep. That's exactly it. You know, um, you you need to be Mr. Nice Guy. You need to play ball. This is what we're going to tell you to do, and we expect you to do it. Hey, we were right on this one, too. Oh, To that. apply for and receive state, federal, private funds and or grants Mm. or gifts to accomplish the partner's planning and planning-related activities, Mm. i.e., we'll take money from an NGO, we'll take money from a foundation. Blandon Foundation. We'll take money from the feds, state. We don't care. Right. Money, 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 money. Follow the money. Mm -hmm. Ross Bros. say follow the money. To assist individual partners in obtaining grants for projects related to the partnership's planning activity. So not only do they want to do it, Mm -hmm. they want the cities to do it too. Of course. To enter into contracts as deemed necessary to accomplish the partnership's purpose and activities. Now, is that limited to just a financial contract? I would assume that they could decide this company will be doing some of the uh, development. I mean, whether, you know, that's, I don't know how that works. You know, obviously if it's, it's highway stuff, you probably have MnDOT involved, but if it's County road stuff that goes in between counties or whatever, and you have to, you know, because you do have dependencies between Wright County and Sherburn County that there may be some of that. Uh, if you're talking about things along the Mississippi river, um, you may hire one developer to do all of that or what i i don't know i mean it, it's could be financial it could be it could be business it could be i don't i don't see like individual cities and townships entering into contracts with each other i think it's outside entities but mm-hmm. it'd be interesting to see exactly what kind of contracts they're they're talking i would guess you're right i would guess it's developers I would guess that there's going to be an oligopoly of developers that will be on the in. Mm-hmm. Now, could they 
if there was a project, say Big Lake and Big Lake Township, there was going to be a little project that involved both. Mm-hmm. Could they pick a developer to develop that? They don't own the land. Right. I, I don't know. Um, well, they could. I mean, they could definitely pressure the mm-hmm. smaller governments to do that. Yeah. So, I mean, folks, you know, we say this stuff and, and, and people think we're conspiracy theorists here. All this stuff is on their website. I mean, it's it's nothing we're coming up with uh, or making up. And in fact, how many times in this podcast alone have I said, oh, this means that or that or the, and then like you go and read it later. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, it we've seen well. this movie before. <laughs> yeah, this and it not, doesn't have a happy end. I like happy endings. This, yeah. this does not have Do, do you end. really? You and your Lifetime movies, do those have ha- happy endings? Oh, they're great endings. It's a great ending. Oh, my word. I love it when the women are the psychos. Yeah, they they, they get. Do they do both on that channel, or oh, sometimes yeah. the oh, men yeah. are the psychos I don't like too? The ones where the men are the a holes. Too real. I like it when the women are yeah. crazy. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> yeah, I've watched. Look, I admit I love Lifetime movies. Yeah, I can't get enough of them. I can watch them all the time. My goodness. Okay. Yeah, and you'd think. The same sort of thing happening, the obsessed stalker, the psycho grandmother, the yeah. blah, blah, blah. You think they could play that enough times to where you wouldn't want to watch it anymore. But yeah. I want to watch it over and over. <laughs> when you want your man card back, just let me know. I've got it. What are you talking about? Real wallet. men watch Lifetime. Don't you know that? <laughs> it's like real men don't ask for directions. Just, they don't well, read no, instructions. They true. don't fill up ice cube trays. Uh, they mow the lawn. They don't cut the grass. Come on, <laughs> do you know all this stuff? Jay? I know all that. I'm not up on the Lifetime movies. Well, you should be because should it's be, good huh? stuff. You just yeah. gotta trust me. It's good stuff. And I get into. I shouldn't say this on the air, but I get. <laughs> I get in good graces with the misses. Yeah. Anytime I want to watch Doctor Phil. Or the Lifetime movies. And okay. now I I embrace both now. Yeah. Because Dr. Phil's kind of like a Lifetime movie in some ways. Th- that's true. I'm, you know? I'm sure that's the psycho very women. true. Every, every, every woman he has on the show is a psycho. Every guy he has on is an a-hole. Yeah. It's literally the same thing. It's like the, it's like the yeah. guy who is a jerk and just the biggest wiener attracts the crazy woman who's who's uh you know psycho with the credit card or something like that i mean they literally are uh that has to be like the number one uh group that gets married and divorced wow it has to be huh just watch dr phil you will see it day after day after day (laughs) after day the total jerk marrying the whack job woman And I know some people are angry when I put oh, it that boy. way, but it's like, look, go watch it yourself. Watch it yourself and tell me that's not what they have. Uh, well. They're crazy. Uh, that's how they get the ratings, I guess. Well, no, no, that's real. If that's you, if real. You, if, you had, uh, if you had two sane people on there that were kind and, and generous and who listened to each other, it wouldn't make for very good TV. Oh, God, it wouldn't make for very good real life either. I mean, you got to have some conflict. Well, yeah, but that's what keeps a fire in the furnace, Jay. I mean, you got to have something like that. Hmm. You know, here, here's the thing. One thing that I'll always say about me, I will not be boring. Yeah. Okay, it's kind of like us on this show. You and I are never boring. We talked for two hours about county attorneys, and that show was great. Yes. Okay, and I challenge any podcast out there to do that. I challenge Joe Rogan to do, who I love. He could probably do that. He may be able to. He could, he could have it with, like, because uh, I can see Joe asking you good questions of, yes. like, a county attorney. And I can see a county attorney sure as hell not wanting to go on there with him. Right. <laughs> so, but, um, you know, yeah, you got, you just, things can't get, the worst thing you can have is boring indifference. No, to me, that's the worst thing on earth. And I, I get, uh, I don't know if it's restless or what, but um, I don't know. I mean, just to me, uh, the, the Lifetime movies are the, 
or the the spice I need or something. Okay. I don't, I don't know what. Well, it is. whatever helps, I guess. I'll probably watch one tonight wow. when the missus gets home. Not me. I think I'll go home. Yeah, you go I'll, home and watch the McLaughlin. I will. Or no, I'll go and release your your next podcast oh, okay. here. Well, I got can, that coming. That's that's. And better. then I got to work on demos for my album. So that's that's what I got coming tonight. Well, that's exciting. That is exciting. <laughs> Anytime I way, get to put a guitar in my hand, that's a good thing. By the way, I got yes. I got to ask this: um, when you talk about your new album or the album you want to put together, yeah, what genre of music do you consider? what you're thinking about doing i mean i know it's, i don't want to i don't want to i don't like labels i don't I, like I, I don't either but i also think if you don't give people a frame of reference that uh they have no idea what you're doing you know what i mean sure so i i think to a point you kind of have to and then you just are as creative as as you can be within you know the bounds of that and you know that really it doesn't mean a, a whole lot you know but but you have to give people a frame of reference because if you tell people, oh, I do something that's unlike anything you've ever heard, well, they yeah, then you get out there and it. play bluegrass. And they'll never like, hear yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but but what I do is more. It, it, it's rock and roll, you know. I, I bring in elements of um, all sorts of things that I just love. But you know, if I was to say, does it have a direction? I mean, it, it's it's definitely got like an old grunge element to it because. I love that stuff, you know, and I, I love the bluesiness of it. Like a lot of the modern rock now, I mean, just they kind of sap a lot of the life out of it because, you know, everything is. Of course they the, do. They, 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 all the drums are on a grid. Okay. All the vocals are on auto tune. And, and what now, did I, what did I tell you about corporations? Yeah. The person who is creative, who wants to push the boundaries, is yeah. not who they want. Right. There was a time in music where that was embraced. Yes. And it will be again when the right thing comes along. You I know, so. everybody was so happy with all the 80s stuff and it was going good, but it got stale and people people just kind of... Music's changed, you know, though, if but, you look at decade to but, decade. But when Kurt organic. Cobain came along, no one expected that. No one saw it coming and it changed everything. Hmm. But did yet, he really change everything? It did. It changed. Uh, uh, Jimmy Hendrix uh, style. Super produced vocals and vocal harmonies, and you had this huge sound, and then you had one guy with a half out of tune Fender Jaguar and a bass player and a drummer who just nailed the snot out of his drums, and and all of a sudden, music changed, and it made it made the way for for bands like Soundgarden and Pearl Jam and Alice in Chains and Stone Temple Pilots and Smashing Pumpkins all to to make a home for themselves in I've in heard market. of that. Yeah. I've heard of them. Yeah. I mean those those bands existed in the in the late eighties, into the early nineties. Uh, but it it is when that happened, when Nevermind happened, that it kind of opened the door and the floodgates for all this other stuff to happen. So hmm. yeah. And to go on the record, I was never bored with the eighties. Yeah. I wasn't either. I loved it, but I I loved it both. Yeah, I just that next level. It just it has to. I don't like the direction it's going in, you know. And well, it, it 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 needs a renaissance and it people need to rediscover and some people do, you know. But a lot of it's fake, just like with a lot of these buildings where they put the fake facades on and they make it look all trendy and how they want it to look. Music too. It's like you can walk into any H and M or Target or whatever, and and buy buy uh, t shirts of all these rock and roll bands that these kids have never heard of, but yet they wear them around. You know, and and so uh, what? You, oh yeah, you you buy these bands. Hey, I love your Metallica t shirt. Oh yeah, um, yeah, I got it at Target. Whoa, I love this album. I'll I'll, I'll talk to them. I'll engage them sometimes. Oh, yeah, um, got it at Target. It's like, oh yeah so it's time that you know pushing boundaries and yeah, young people are dumb <laughs> i'm not gonna say that I'm i just, am well okay why would you buy why would you buy a shirt with a band that you've never heard because it's trendy because the mega corporations are telling you that's what you need to wear that's what they're selling that's what's cool so i haven't done that since i bought zubas <laughs> Never bought Zubas. I still wear them. Hank. 
but you know that. Yes. Yeah, well, those were actually created in Minnesota. You knew that? I did not. The creator, I, I believe, uh, in Duluth. Uh, the, the guy, At least the guy lived or lives in Duluth. Um, yeah, at least part-time. But hmm. yes, um, the creator of Zubas right here in this great state. What more do you need, America? You have the creator of Zubas that makes Minnesota just... A shining star among the 50. Uh, well, I was just up at the North Shore last weekend, and that's, yeah. uh, you know, anything that highlights that, I'm for. Yes. I drove by your hometown, James. Good. Proctor. Yes. Just a beauty. It is. I love it. Didn't drive through it. Well, drove no, by it. no. Well, kind of. I mean. Is that on two? Yeah. Heading toward Grand yep. Rapids yep. then? Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, I, then I'm sure I've been through it a bunch of times. I just yeah, yeah. No well, there's not a ton to it. Yeah. There's a railroad and there's a Dairy Queen and there's a few bars and a couple of gas stations and a well, service sounds, station. Sounds great to me. There's That's a bank. Yeah, perfect lake nearby. Yeah, of course, in Minnesota. All right. Well, let me just sum up here, folks. If you want to go back, if you want to talk with Central. Mississippi River Regional Planning Partnership. And look, these partnerships are all over the place. We've done podcasts on them, Jay. East Metro yep. Strong, the Gateway Project, Botno, Botno. Yep. Uh, uh, you know, Coalition of Greater Minnesota Cities, which is a bigger one, but I mean, Mado, uh, <clears throat> all of these quasi government uh, bodies. Mm hmm that are all over this state, they're all over the country, all over the world. I mean, it is inescapable. Wherever you live, you have one of these above you. Yes. Somewhere. It is true. So I know that's depressing. I know it stinks. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news yet again. But, <laughs> you know, let's just, I'll tell you what, we go, Jay, we go where things take us. Yes. Okay. You know, a government always continues to, to get bigger and take control of more things. I wonder where they go from here. If there will be regional governments over the regional governments, if, if like, you know, areas uh, like all the regional governments in this state, minus, you know, some of these smaller knockoffs and, and the Metro Council, Metropolitan Council are all under Mado. Well, what if, I mean, you have the National Association of Development Organizations. What if they decided to branch into, oh, we'll have a, a Midwestern and an Upper Midwestern, a Southwestern. Probably group. exists. It, it, it might. We haven't ever looked into that. I just had that idea right now. If you know about that, give us uh, give us an email. <laughs> but uh, uh, otherwise... Look at, I, look at the COVID stuff. It, it how we entered in with, with Wisconsin and all the way to yeah. Kentucky. There's already, you know, m regional stuff going on that, that we just, they're going to need ways to manage that at some point. It's like, oh, sure, all the governors were in agreement and moving in the same direction, but you need, you need that group of governments with an administration over it to be able to put a plan into place. It didn't work because they didn't have that. They didn't have the, the backbone, that framework to be able to put a, a plan of action in legislatively. I'll tell you what I fear is uh, you talked about this branching into something bigger. I worry this is going to branch into something smaller. That you're going to take land use and make mm -hmm. that one little thing. You're going to take we already have it with yeah. water. Yeah. Uh, you take water and make it its own little thing. You take transit and make it its own little thing. Mm. You take I mean um and there are groups like that that are yeah. not necessarily under something. But the more of these you have, the harder it is to unravel. And right. so there's an advantage to creating, I don't know if it's necessarily things above this um, or bigger, but smaller things could make this way worse. Yeah. Because you have all, you got one partnership here among this whole area. Right. Okay. What if there were eight? Mm hmm. Yeah, that would be. And they all had their own little agreements. They all went for grant money. They mm -hmm. all they were in charge of one thing. I mean, that would be, and and maybe this isn't the kind of area that would do that. Maybe it would have to be a a bigger city or or something like that. But 
you could see a Rochester yeah. branching off into little things like that. You could certainly see a Duluth, mm-hmm. a St. Cloud. I don't know if they well, do especially don't. around these larger cities and in having b- greater control over the townships yeah. that are around them. Talked about that, annexation. Yeah, well, this could be with other issues so that they can control water, so that they can control land use, so that they can control uh, Law enforcement. traffic and, yeah, all of this. Uh, I could see cities doing that where they enter into these agreements for the good of the townships around or the them. the region, then, quote, yeah, the region, right. because that swallows everybody. Right. <clears throat> oh, boy. So the future for this, folks, is... Bleak and black yeah. and dire. They're not out of options yet to grow yeah. government. <laughs> Hopefully they're not taking taking notes and coming up with something. Right. If it happens, it's not our fault. <laughs> yeah, the central <laughs> Mississippi regional uh, land use partnership becomes yeah. out of this. I sure hope not. But we're going to leave you with something uplifting. Maybe. Maybe. I, I, I'm preempting you there, Jim. Okay. That's a lot of pressure. Words of wisdom. Styling and profiling, jet flying, limousine riding, wheeling, dealing, son of a gun. With the sign off sermon words you need to hear, my friends. Community Solutions once again. For the 239th time, I think. Uh, not that much. 37, I think. 38, 38. We present Jason Bradley. Thank you, Andrew. This is not the Andrew Richter Show, so if you believe it, it's not necessarily true. I just want to give you that disclaimer right there. Um, ah, yes. <laughs> you go ahead and search that up while I, while I wax philosophically here for a moment. <clears throat> Let me tell you, folks, it's, um, it's kind of discouraging. And it can be overwhelming because government does grow by nature. That's what it does. It figures, oh, what we have doesn't give us the right to do this that we want to do. So we need to create a new level of government that addresses this so that we have the right to do it. And that is how we get from a place where there's city and township government with county government to uh, regional government. Uh, it, it, it just, it never ceases to amaze me. The uh, executive administration offices that get set up, uh, the regional governments that get set up, the special interest groups, the money they get from the foundations. It all seems to be just one big, huge circle that doesn't ever seem to dry up, doesn't ever seem to be void of volunteers and or employees, and it sure doesn't seem to ever struggle to have plans. Well, we all know, because we've traced these things back, like Minnesota Association of Development Organizations has a National Association of Development Organizations, right? Or you have the Minnesota Association of School Boards. There's a National Association of School Boards. League of Minnesota Cities, National League of Cities. It is like this everywhere and with everything. And these national groups give their plans to the state groups to pass it down to the locals. And so they think that they're putting in this plan come up by people in their region to be able to make these changes, but they came from Washington, D.C., or they came from New York, or they came from California. And all of a sudden, we start to change. We start to drift away from what we've always known and loved about our areas. Because really, that is why we live in these places, because we have an affinity for the amenities or the natural resources or the beauty of nature around. We, We like how close we are to the city, how far we are from the city. Those things are being stripped from us and everything is being turned into a single homogeneous location. You know, it doesn't matter. I mean, you're going to have Starbucks wherever you go. You're going to have a Walmart wherever you go. You're going to have the same things everywhere you go and everything is going to look the same. I like the small towns. I I like going and, and 
eaten somewhere I've never eaten before. I, I don't necessarily want to go to Miami and stop at Burger King. You know what I mean? I would like to I would like to eat at a good local restaurant. But again, we're being stripped of that. Our individuality is being laid by the wayside and any individuality that we have in the way we want to run our businesses or run our lives or run our towns it's all going by the wayside and unfortunately we've got to toe the line or else we're being made to be seen as outsiders as enemies of the state as people that uh, just won't go along and cooperate with what everybody else is trying to do that's just so darn nice well I'm kind, but I ain't nice. I don't go along to get along. I'll treat anyone around me with kindness and love and compassion and understanding, and I'll help somebody out if they need it, but I'm not going to just lay down and let somebody steamroll me into something that I don't believe in, that I don't want. I mean, this is maybe something for a future podcast. I didn't even know. You know, with the Hyde Amendment, abortions are not allowed to use tax dollars. In Minnesota, they are allowed to use state tax dollars because of laws that were passed here in this state. I'm sorry, I don't agree with that. I don't like what you're doing with my money. I don't agree with it. I think it's wrong. I think that we need ownership back. We need to have a little skin in the game. We need to wrestle away from these politicians who refuse to do anything. Control. Control is, is given. It is not taken. And they're trying to take it. They'll be successful if we let them. But if we don't let them, if we put up resistance, and I don't mean it, again, I've said this a billion times, I don't mean fighting out in the streets. I mean just saying no. I mean primarying people that refuse to do their job when they go to St. Paul. I mean overturning somebody's seat in a city council or county board that refuses to be responsible with our money, with our freedoms. There's a whole lot of them out there that, that say, oh, I'm conservative, I'm conservative, I'm conservative, but they're not. They do the same things. They make excuses for the reasons why they do them and, and try to make it seem like, oh, well, it's not always bad. I mean, I had to do it in this situation and this is why. No, we need principled people that will follow what is right and what they have promised. And it any time that somebody says, that, well, there's a reason I had to break my principles. No, I'm sorry. You can't kill the free market to save the free market. That's not how it works. That's not how it works at all. And that's why we're in trouble. Because we've, we've been squishy. And we've allowed people to just get, get by with whatever they feel like doing. And we don't ever put our foot down. We don't say no. We don't say you shall not pass. We do not say that we are not going to allow this to happen. We just go, oh, well, Republicans and Democrats got together and passed another tens of millions, uh, tens of billions of, of, of omnibus money. Well, all right. They just passed another bonding bill. Well, all right. I don't like it, but okay. And then we go about our business and the same people get into office over and over and over and over and over. There has to be a time when we decide that we're just done, done listening, done watching ourselves be harmed financially, be harmed in our liberty, be harmed in our schools having complete streets shoved down our throats, more bike lanes, more mixed-use housing, more luxury apartments, more, 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 more. You know, maybe I'm old-fashioned. 
Oh, my great grandpa lived in his home until he was in his 90s. And I sure hope to do the same thing. I don't want to be stuck in some some cubicle of an apartment somewhere where I can go down and get my three square meals a day and and play bingo every Friday night at five. So many of us are dying before we ever truly live. So many of us are not taking chances. So many of us are not living the adventure that we have been meant to live. Life was never meant to be like that. Life was meant to be an adventure. Life was meant to take us on a wild ride where we don't know where we're going to end up. And we, we set goals and we do our best to meet those goals. And, and, and then we follow the twists and turns and, and we live an amazing life. But too many of us just live this planned out existence where we get up every day, do the same thing, come home, do the same thing, go to bed, get up every day, do the same thing, come home, do the same thing, go to bed. Apartment, we downsize. Or we move into a town home, we downsize. Then when we're a certain age, we move into assistant living, we downsize. At a certain age, we move into a nursing home or we move in with our kids, we downsize. Life is meant to be an adventure. You know, you had B.B. King out doing the thing he loved, playing music on the road till he was in his 80s. Too many of us just give up. We look forward to retirement, picking up the, the golf clubs or getting our discount card for early coffee at Perkins but we never truly live that's what I'm going to challenge you to do this week truly live to make a commitment to do something that you've never done before and if you have been involved in your community and you're trying to fight back I'm going to urge you to set some goals what is it you're trying to do? How are you going to get there? What are things that need to happen in order for those changes to be heard and to start having the wheels of motion put behind them? And take a step. We're here to help people with just that. If your thing is running for office, if your thing is um, is is sitting uh, and, and helping to govern on, on an advisory commission, if your thing is helping out and, and lending your knowledge. We want to help you get in that position. We want to help you dream and do. If, if, if your thing is wanting to start a podcast, if your thing is, is wanting to, to lead a group and lead meetings and, and get people to come in and energize them and set them loose to, to change their city, we'd love to talk to you about that. Because life is supposed to be an adventure. We only have so much time, and when it expires, we're all done. That's what you do with your time while you're here. Do you live out your purpose, why you were put here, or did you live it for yourself? And we should get enjoyment out of life, but... I'm here to tell you there's no greater enjoyment than to live out your destiny. Send us an email. C-O-M-M-SolutionsMN at gmail.com That is C-O-M-M-SolutionsMN at gmail.com We were all created and, and for a purpose and, and those things that we need to do to be able to walk in that destiny were prepared before us long ago. We want to help you. We want to turn the tables. We want to stop the things <clears throat> that they call good that are evil. And instead, start walking in the things that we see are good. They want to walk in the things that are evil and call them good. We want to walk in the things that are good that they call evil. We have to do it. It's only us. 
or no one else is going to do it. So that's my challenge to you this week. Let's do it. Let's pick up and let's start working together because we all have a part to play and we can all do our own thing and still work together on this. All right? And we're going to be back in a week with another podcast. So don't you go anywhere. We love you, Minnesota. But now it's your turn to get to work. Get too caught up